Yeah, great. So um, today I want to give an update on the DHT routing table health study that we've been conducting at ProBlab. And so I'm going to start uh, quickly uh, by introducing, because uh, uh, this is a bit technical, so the Kademlia DHT routing table, the way it works. So um, Kademlia is a distributed hash table um, which is basically a decentralized overlay network in which there is no central peer. And each node has to know at least some of the other peers participating in the network um, just to be connected. And this set of peers is called the routing table. And um, so in the Calumnia implementation, um, all of the peers that are in this routing table are sorted, uh, per, so are sorted in what's called K buckets. Uh, which um, is uh, defined by the XOR distance between a peer ID and another peer ID. Uh, each bucket is kept at 20 peers. So I'm going to just give a quick example to uh, illustrate better. So for instance, if we take um, a random peer uh, identified by an 8-bit uh, string, so 0110100, um, and uh, I just generated some random other 8-bit strings. And uh, I filled in uh, those peers or those bit strings in the uh, K bucket of the initial peer. And as we can see, so uh, the, the logic is uh, the if a 2-bit string share a prefix of length x, it's going to be in the bucket x. So for instance, in the bucket 0, all of the peers start with a 1. Uh, whereas the, the our reference peers start with a zero and for yeah, and so on. So for instance, in bucket two, the all of the peers share a two uh, a common prefix of length two, and we can see that when the peers are generated randomly, which is the case for um, IPFS or libp identifiers, and we expect to have a lot of peers in the low ID bucket and uh, way fewer in the higher ID bucket and in an exponential way. So to measure a bit the health of the, um, the actual network, um, we use the nebula crawler, which will um, try to, will, that will crawl the network and uh, provide a snapshot with all of the peers that are online and all the, the state of the routing table. So all of the peers that are in each node the routing table. And so for this specific study, uh, the data was taken out of 28 crawls, so from 28 snapshots of the network over one week. And so the methodology uh, we used to, uh, yeah, for, for, for this study, um, so given the global snapshot, we were able to reproduce the K-bucket for each of the peers um, simply by computing the XOR distance between each of the peers in the routing table and the reference peer. And from the global view, uh, let's say we are able to see if some of the nodes should be included in a K-bucket, but are actually missing from the, the K-bucket we retrieve from the network row. So we can see what the theoretical bucket should be and what they actually are. And also for this study, it was a bit hard to um, compute all of the XOR distances because uh, to see if any of the peers were missing, we need to get the X closest peers to a specific peer ID, which is uh, computationally expensive as the XOR distance is not linear. And so we implemented a, a binary try in Python uh, to speed things up. So the result we get uh, from, from this study is, the first, we want to study what's the ratio of peers that are in someone's writing table but are unreachable from the network. And so, so basically stale entries in the, in, the, in the routing table. So that's the result we get. So for bucket 0 to 8, the rate is quite low. So the buckets 0 to bucket 8 are the buckets that are full, that contain 20 peers almost all of the time. 
And so the rate is very low. It's um, on average out of the 20 peers uh, that are in the bucket, 0 0.75 are unreachable. So that's very good given the, the high churn rate that we observe in IPFS. And for the bucket 9 to 21, we observe a higher rate, but it's still very acceptable. And so I think we obtain different results for the low ID bucket and the higher ID bucket because uh, the replacement method um, is different, is implemented differently in Google. Um, now to the next um, measurement. So now we want to see if the distribution is um, the distribution of the peers in the K buckets is as we expected. So as the peer, the peer ID are expected to be generated randomly over um, the key space of 256 bit, we expect that um, buckets, uh, so yeah, there will be a halving on the candidates that are eligible for each of the buckets. And so we can see that bucket zero to eight are capped at the maximum of 20. And then we can see this exponential growth or decline going down. And so that's exactly the, the number we expected, uh, which is good. And uh, so when we look at the, the rate or the number of missing peers for each bucket, we can see that for the full buckets, the, so yeah, uh, sorry again, uh, the missing peers are if um, first the bucket is not full, and second, there is a peer in the network that would have fit this bucket, but that is actually not in this bucket that we've been able to observe using the global snapshot. Then uh, the missing peers rate uh, for the full bucket uh, is very low. It's 0 0.12 uh, out of the 20 peers. And it's a bit higher for the higher ID bucket. But again, it is still very, very acceptable. And now getting to uh, the, so one of the key um, properties of the Academia DHT is that the node is supposed to be aware or to have the 20 closest peers um, to itself in its routing table, uh, just for uh, routing uh, yeah, property. And what we observe is that uh, given the high churn rate, again, so we expect to have uh, yeah, not 100%, obviously, because some nodes are entering and leaving the network, so it changes constantly. Uh, we observe, uh, surprisingly, that 61% of the peers know all of their 20 closest peers. So all of the 20 closest peers are in the K buckets. And 95% uh, of the peers know at least 18 out of the 20 um, closest peers, which is um, also excellent. So what we can tell uh, from this study is that the, the DHT is very healthy and um, maybe more than we, we could have expected. So it's perfect. So we have a very low rate of stale entries in the, in the K buckets. The peer distribution is as expected. Um, only a few peers are missing from the routing table, which is good again. And a very high rate of no, no uh, 18 out of the 20 closest peers. So that's very good. Um, so the probe lab is doing a lot of RFM. I think at, at the moment there are 20 RFM that we publish on the GitHub uh, repo protocol uh, slash network measurement. So you can, I encourage you to go and check them out. Uh, we already published one, which is RFM2. And this one, RFM19, so there is a report with much more details that is available. Um, on the so the peer is not mayor yet, but the report is already accessible. And uh, so I'm going to give some more details um, on this at the IPFS thing um, next week. So if you're around, uh, make sure to attend the measuring IPFS track. Um, and we also measure some some things that were odd and may mean that the THD isn't uh, as healthy on the on some other aspect as we think, uh, because uh, the diversity in the low ID bucket 
um, is lowering over time. And so it might become a problem because the network may become centralized. Um, here are some references with some links, so I'll, I'll upload them later uh, on the Google Docs. And yeah, that's it for me.